Now in this video, I'd like to talk about friction. Friction is not a simple force. It's not one of the fundamental forces of nature like your gravity or electromagnetism. And because of that, there is no simple equation. What's actually happening, let's say you've got an object and you push it or slide it along the surface, even though the surfaces look fairly smooth, they're not really at an atomic level. What's happening as it slides is the microscopic irregularities in the top and bottom bump against one another. You get transient chemical bonds forming, oxide layers fragment. All sorts of really complicated physics takes place here. And in fact, there's a whole field of science called tribology, which is a study of how one solid surface exactly interacts with something else. And if, for example, you work for a car company or try to design pistons, this becomes really important. What we're going to show you in this course is a very crude, very approximate equation that's been worked out by trial and error. There's nothing fundamental about it, but it gives roughly the right answer most of the time. I can't promise anything more than that. So let's think about it. Let's say I try to push a book along the surface. To begin with, I apply no force, so it's stationary. Now I apply a very small force and it's not moving. I apply a bigger and bigger force, it doesn't move. And at some point it starts to move. Now that initial stage where I'm applying a bigger and bigger and bigger force and it's not moving, what's happening is friction must be applying an equal and opposite force that constantly varies to cancel out exactly what I'm applying. So in that situation, it's very much like we talked about for normal force and tension. Where one can think of the friction as all these atoms stuck together at the bottom acting like a spring. So as I push, the spring, which is like a sideways spring, extends a bit and pushes back and pushes back even more. And so whatever force I apply, it applies back exactly the same force. So in that case, we use an equation, which is the normal force, the, not normal force, the friction force, up to a certain limit, applies an equal opposite force to whatever the component is trying to push it along the surface. Now, as I apply more and more force, eventually, at some point, it starts moving. Up until this point, we're in the situation of static friction, when the two surfaces are not moving past each other. There's a limit to that. And the limiting force, the maximum force I can apply before it starts moving, is in the simple equation given by the normal force between the two objects times the coefficient of static friction, which is written as mu s. So what you do is you work out the normal force, which in this case is just going to be the weight, multiply by mu s, and that tells you the maximum sideways force I can apply. Now these coefficients of static friction, typically you know, about a half or one or something like that, they might be as low as 0.1 or 0.2 for very shiny, slippery surfaces. If you put a bit of oil in between things, it gets much lower. Once it's moving, the friction force is generally thought to be constant and is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of dynamic friction, also written as mu d. And the coefficient of dynamic friction is usually less than the coefficient of static friction. It takes more force to get something moving than to keep it moving. Now, a common error people make when doing calculating friction is to get the direction wrong. And the trouble here is that people think friction opposes motion. Now, that's correct, but you have to think a little carefully about what you actually mean by motion. If it's something like taking this book and sliding it across the floor, the motion is pretty straightforward. The book is moving this way, therefore the friction is going the other way. But it's more complicated for situations like cars with wheels or people running. Let's say I'm trying to run a sprint, so I push off. Now, what's happening there is I'm trying to move in this direction, and therefore my feet are pushing backwards. So if I was on a really slippery surface, like on ice, if I tried to run forward, my feet would just slip. So my feet would move backwards. So in this case, the motion that actually matters is the motion between atoms on the ground, and I'm trying to move my feet backwards so as to propel me forwards. So the actual motion is backwards and the friction force is forwards. It's actually friction that helps you accelerate when you're sprinting. Likewise, let's say a car wheel is rolling along the ground and a car is accelerating, the wheel is trying to push the ground backwards. So if left to itself, if it was on a gravel surface, the wheel would spin and push backwards. So the motion is backwards and the friction is forwards. 
On the other hand, when a car is trying to brake and slow down, the wheels are locked, and so they're trying to turn less than the car would like them to. So in that case, the brake friction force is going to point backwards. So if you're trying to work out what direction friction points, bear in mind it does oppose motion, but it's the motion at the surface level, which way the surface is trying to move with respect to another. It's not the motion of the overall car or the person. The easiest way to work it out is just to say, what direction must it be pointing to explain the result we see?